The rumor that Goku grew a tail spread throughout the academy quickly, and it was clear that it reached the ears of Osbin, who did not take long to call Goku to his office to check it. When Goku entered, there were Osbin and Glinda, who was still a little afraid of Goku, because of what happened several days ago. Osbin began to circle around Goku with a serious face, while he seemed to be thinking about something. He went around him several times and checked several times. He returned to his desk and asked Goku to also sit down. I must say that you never stop surprising me, Goku, said Osbin. Ha ha he, you're going to embarrass me. Goku laughed, rubbing the back of his neck. Osbin, with a drop of sweat on his head, told him, I'm not praising you, but I still don't understand the reason why my tail grew again, Goku said. Well it seems that when I woke up your aura, that accelerated your cells, resulting in your tail growing again, Osbin told him. Goku nodded with a serious face, but in his eyes, you could see that he didn't understand anything, something that Osbin noticed and said, so that you understand, by making you stronger it grew again. Whoa, now I understand it, ha ha he. You should say it like that and not with strange and difficult words, Goku told him. Have you noticed any relevant changes? Asked Osbin. Well, I feel stronger and my balance is better, Goku replied. Osbin showed a surprised face and thought, even stronger? I see, that's good. You can leave now if you want, Osbin said. Okay, see you, director, Goku said, saying goodbye. When Goku left the office, they waited a little, and when they thought he couldn't hear them, they spoke. He got stronger, Osbin shouted, hitting the desk as he stood up. Glinda, a little nervous, said, director, if that boy ends up on the wrong side of the balance, we'll be finished. Osbin thought for a few moments about the possibility of Goku moving to the other side, but he quickly discarded that possibility. I don't think so, Miss Glinda. Considering that his sense of justice seems to be the right one, and he has the girls from his team here, as long as none of them chooses the wrong path, he will defend them with everything, Osbin replied. You won't be thinking that that boy can develop romantic feelings for any of them, right? From the way he acts, he doesn't seem to understand those things, Glinda said. Why do you think I invited him to join this academy? It was not only for his power, but for him to learn about human relationships. From what he told us, he spent almost all his life in solitude, and even when he found companions, he always ended up traveling alone, Osbin explained. I see, Glinda understood, I need him to develop very strong ties with the girls to be able to anchor him to our side. Since I feel that dangerous times are coming, Osbin said, while looking out the window with a serious face. A month later, Osbin had fixed Goku's clothes, and now they all had a hole for the tail. The first days many were surprised by the tale, but in the end, everyone got used to it. Goku's life in the academy seemed fun to him since it was something new for him, and it seemed better to him than always walking after the spheres and living most of his time outdoors. One day, Yang proposed that the training would be the four girls versus Goku to test if they could defeat him together. Goku had no problem since he likes to fight, but Yang added a rule, if she could touch or hit Goku first, he would have to spend the whole day with her. That excited the girls since having him as a helper would be fun. The JNPR team found out about it and went to see how everything would end. It should be said that Nora supported Goku's victory, and Pira was forced by Nora to make batons with her cheerleader dress included to embarrass the red-haired one. Goku in the center was surrounded by the four girls, and with Yang's warning, they began the practice fight. The first to attack was Yang, but with a soft movement, Goku made her turn in the air, and threw her against Blake, who tried to stealthily attack. Weiss, who thought she had the opportunity with Goku now turning his back on her, tried to freeze Goku's feet with her weapon. But he had disappeared, and now he was behind her, giving her a touch on the back of her head, leaving her out of combat first. Ruby thought that was the time, and tried to catch him off guard with her scythe, but without turning around, he caught the blade with his fingers and threw Ruby against the stands. Yang, now recovered, was very upset and with her eyes now red, she threw herself in a straight line against Goku. He, still without moving, dodged all the blows and kicks that Yang threw at him, which irritated Yang even more. She did not realize that Goku used his tail to grab her by the foot and make her fall to the ground. Then he grabbed her foot with his hand and threw her against the wall of the gym, leaving her out of combat as well. The only one left now was Blake, who thought of using her semblance to confuse him and thus be able to hit him. Blake created multiple copies of herself which surprised Goku since he hadn't seen that ability for a long time. This gave him the idea of doing the same, and he used his Zanzaken, creating copies throughout the gym, leaving everyone surprised. 
Goku, who knew where the original Blake was, comma, only used the air pressure with a single movement at high speed, catching her off guard and consequently defeating her. Even though they were defeated, the four girls were impressed by Goku's ability in combat and praised him for his skill, making him blush, which seemed funny to the girls. In the end, Goku decided to spend a day with each one since he found the fight fun, which made them happy and annoyed Nora. Thanks to that, he was able to better understand the girls on the team. The day with Ruby, Goku was able to understand that she is passionate about sweets and that it is difficult for her to make friends with people. The day with Weiss, he not only learned that she is very proud, but also that when she trusts someone, she fully trusts them, and that she has her sweet side when you get to know her. The day with Yang, he learned that she is not only bold and direct in battles, but also that she loves her family more than anything, and that she would give her life for Ruby without hesitation. She is also an adventurer. The day with Blake, Goku realized that she is very fair, and does not discriminate against anyone, but that she finds it difficult to open up to others for fear of rejection. Goku learned a lot about the girls during his dates, to put it in a way, but the one that had him worried was Blake since, because of her secret, it was difficult for her to open up to the other girls. One day, when the four of them were walking around the city, they saw the police at an establishment, and they approached to investigate. Ruby, curious, asked the agents about what happened. This is already the fifth robbery, and as always, they don't touch the money. They just take the dust and leave the rest intact, explained the policeman. Before walking away, it was heard that between the two policemen they said a name, White Fang. Weiss, upon hearing that name, with an annoyed tone, said, White Fang, a small group of degenerates, and garbage, with her arms crossed. Blake, when she heard that, was upset for some reason, and said, What's your problem? White Fang is not what you think. They are just a group of misguided faunus, said Blake with a stern face. Misguided? Ha! Huh. They are just a group of thieves and criminals. Weiss replied. Goku, who didn't understand the reason why they were arguing, asked Yang, why are these two arguing? It seems that Weiss does not accept the faunus of White Fang, and Blake is defending them, Yang replied. Goku was thinking, and said, hey, what's a faunus? Both Ruby and Yang fell to the ground comically because of the question. Didn't they explain it to you in class? Asked Yang. I don't know, they say very difficult things, and I get sleepy, he said, arching an eyebrow. Both Yang and Ruby laughed nervously at Goku's response. Yang briefly explained to Goku what a faunus was. He seemed to understand it. But the problem was whether he would remember it. All the way, and even at the academy, Blake and Weiss continued to argue to the point that Blake told everyone that she was also a faunus and ended up fleeing without waiting for the reaction of her classmates. When she thought she had fled far enough, Blake stopped and slowly took off the bow on her head, which hit her cat ears. But when she looked sadly at her bow in her hand, someone spoke to her. You finally stopped hiding your ears, said the voice. Blake was surprised and quickly turned around, and stood on guard, but who she saw was Goku, who had followed her without her realizing it. She put her hands on her head, trying to hide her cat ears, but Goku approached and grabbed her hands, slowly pushing them away so he could see them well. Why are you hiding your ears? asked Goku innocently. You already heard Weiss. People hate the faunus because of White Fang, Blake replied in a sad tone. But you have nothing to do with them, Goku replied. Blake looked at him, and didn't know whether to tell him, or not, since she was afraid of the reaction that Goku could have if he listened to her. But the best thing was to be honest and wait for his reaction. Roman I before, I was a member of White Fang. You could say that I was practically, born into it. But it was different back then. White Fang was born as a group that sought unity and equality between humans and faunus. But five years ago, when the leader changed, the organization also changed. What were once protests became attacks and robberies. When I saw that it no longer had the ideals of the beginning, I left, Blake explained. Blake looked to see how Goku would react. But she was surprised to see that he was with his arms crossed, nodding his head up and down, saying, I see or I understand. Blake quickly noticed that he didn't understand anything and explained it to him in an easier way. To make it easier to understand, when they were good, I was part of it, but when they became bad, I left. Do you understand? Blake asked with a drop of sweat on her head. Whoa, now I understand. You should have explained it that way from the beginning. I don't understand why you like to complicate stories so much, he replied, making an annoyed face. So what do you think? Do you think I'm also a criminal? Blake asked nervously, wanting to know Goku's opinion. I just think that you are you. 
with ears or without them. That doesn't define the person you are right now. And neither does White Fang. You are the only one who can decide who or what you want to be, said Goku. Also if that's the case, don't I have a tail too? He said, wagging his tail with a smile. Blake was surprised. She didn't expect Goku to say something like that. Roman I, it's me, right? Said Blake. That's right, and nothing and no one can change that, not even animal ears or white fang, replied Goku. Blake, at that moment, felt as if something inside her slowly began to change. Certainly, no one can define what one is, neither appearance nor race. In the end, one is what one decides to be. And no one can change that. Apparently, Blake had made a decision, and with a firm look said, Hey Goku, I want you to accompany me to a place, said Blake, who apparently had made a decision.